we're now going to look at a very interesting phenomenon. It is called cyber hoarding. Let's first see what hoarding is. Uh, hoarding is a behavior, uh, you know, almost borderline a mental health condition where, uh, you know, individuals can have an excessive acquisition uh, of goods and they have a major difficulty in getting rid of those goods, especially the ones they do not need. Now, in our own day-to-day -day lives, individual lives, we must know hoarders. Uh, it includes people who have, uh, you know, who are holding on to things which are of no value to them, uh, but they're holding on to those, uh, let's say, books from childhood, or they're holding on to, you know, goods from many, many years ago, which is of absolutely no value to them. It is cluttering their house. It is actually, you know, causing a certain disturbance, but they're unable to let it go. Then we must know a friend or a colleague, uh, you know, who is, uh, who is an excessive uh, shopper, you know, they buy a lot of clothes, a lot of shoes, a lot of things, stationary items perhaps. You know, people can have varied hobbies and varied things that they actually like to shop. And they buy excessive amounts. And then even though that item is of no good to them or is of no use to them, they still cannot part from that item. And they still just want to, you know, keep them and contain them and have them with them. Uh, we also at times know family members that, you know, we are requesting them and telling them to let go of some of the things, to give away some of the things that they do not uh, need, or you know, to distribute some of the things which are of no good use to them. However, they are absolutely incapable or are unable, you know, uh, to let go of those possessions or those goods, even though they're not using them, and even though those things are of no, uh, uh, you know, of no immediate, immediate or future benefit to them. And at times, just just collecting them or keeping them is actually causing. Uh, you know, problems in their life. For instance, if they're taking up a lot of space or, you know, they're actually preventing the useful things from being placed where they should be placed. But people can just, they're sometimes incapable of, you know, letting go of those goods or things. This is a hoarding phenomena. And at times we even joke with our loved ones that, you know, that, okay, let's say that person is a very big hoarder, would, you know, just keep on to, let's say, the, uh, the, the, the shopped goods uh, forever and ever. However, uh, this, this hoarding behavior is also, uh, you know, almost like a mental health disease where we, we ourselves might be hoarding without even knowing it. So this hoarding behavior is a kind of a mental health disease where we are just unable to let go or uh, we are incapable of, you know, uh, getting rid of goods uh, which are of no use to us. So as the cyber world is, uh, is, you know, it has borrowed all, um, or if maybe not all, then a lot of phenomenon from uh, the real world. Similarly, we have just like how individuals have a hoarding behavior, you know, uh, in the cyber world also, we have individuals exhibiting cyber holding. That means uh, that there is an excessive acquisition and storage of digital data, emails, pictures, and other digital stuff. Now, there are several disadvantages of digital hoarding. It prevents individuals, and as a result, it prevents organizations from effectively organizing and managing digital information. You know, and then if we are not effectively organizing and managing digital information, you know, we can be, uh, you know, be taking a toll on the resources of the organization, and we can be becoming a problem for sustainability as well as we, we would be contributing to a disorganized digital environment, which can actually be damaging to others associated with the organization or those who are part of the organization. Digital hoarders, uh, you know, they involve, they, uh, as I told you, that they're involved in excessive accumulation and retention of digital files or content. Uh, they have a difficulty in deleting or organizing digital information. Now, why are they doing so? They're doing so because digital hoarders often fear losing important data or, attach, or they have a certain attachment to the digital possessions. Digital hoarding can occur across platforms like computers, smartphones, email accounts, cloud storage, and social media. It can, as I said earlier, negatively impact productivity, and especially it can cause a digital disorganization. Digital hoarding can then further, you know, have a negative impact on the digital well-being and the biggest problem being that it can cause a digital clutter, which then has a direct impact on organization 
and the individual's productivity. So what we need to do is that we need to adopt habits and we need to, you know, so that, uh, you know, uh, we, we are able to effectively prevent uh, cyber holding. Uh, one of the first things to do is that we need to regularly digitally declutter. Now, this is something for which also, again, we have to schedule a certain time, if not on a daily basis, then at least on a weekly basis, where amongst all the data or all the information that we are receiving on a daily basis, we're able to, you know, really pick and say, okay, this is the important one. This is something that I need to, you know, have. And then, uh, and then organize it in, the, in, in, in its proper files with proper names and recognize that, okay, this particular information is superfluous or is merely a copy of that information which I've already properly archived. And this is something I need to delete and let go of. Then organizations need to have effective organizational systems where you know digital hoarding uh, does not start to build in because if we have uh, you know uh, if organizations do not have effective organizational systems where important data or useful data can be selected from uh, this gigantic pool of information the documents the pictures the videos if the important one cannot be filtered and stored properly and the superfluous or irrelevant one cannot be timely discarded, it can lead to a lot of wastage inside uh, the organization. I will, uh, you know, before uh, ending digital hoarding, give one or two very day-to-day -day examples. For instance, ever since we were able to make photographs using our mobile phone or a smartphone, earlier, uh, several years ago, uh, you know, the whole family used to gather up, dress up very nicely, smile for that one photograph which was taken through an analog camera. And then that one photograph, which it took a lot of effort to develop anyway, was always kept as a treasured memory. However, now with the presence of these uh, smartphones and cell phones, we're able to capture uh, the same scene with exactly the same expressions, with exactly the same information, and we would have made 100 copies of it. You know, click 10 photographs of exactly the same scene. Now, uh, and then what happens is that individuals find it difficult to even delete. Let's say you have, you know, taken 10 photographs of exactly the same scene, having exactly the same information. Digital holder, uh, a typical digital holder will have difficulty in saying, okay, these are just 10 replicas of the same thing. I can just retain one and immediately discard the other nine. You know, uh, and, and now that's just one example where you may have seen a friend uh, going through this. So uh, now what it can do, result is it can A, lead to wastage of time, it definitely leads to a wastage of storage and resources. Uh, so uh, it, at an individual level and then naturally at an organizational level, this is one example where we need to identify that, uh, you know, this is the important information or this is the bare minimum information that we can keep and store. And this is a superfluous information and we need to let go of it. So um, in a nutshell, you know, if we let go of digital hoarding, we're able to declutter, we're able to better organize our systems. It will not just improve our uh, productivity, it will improve our organization's productivity. Another thing which I'm very tempted to share over here is that in order to, you know, prevent clutter or in order to prevent the disorganization, it is very important to give your files, to give your photographs, meaningful descriptive names and then store them in their proper folders. As a teacher, I often get assignments from, uh, from students, let's say, that I would have 20 different students sending me an assignment and each one of them has named it assignment. <laughs> and then at times I would specifically give out an instruction that please give your assignment a meaningful name so that I'm able to identify that, okay, look, this is, this is from Shehnaz Bano. Look, this is from Ali Nasir, you know. These are two individuals who are submitting an assignment and if it is only that they have effectively named that file, that assignment that they're submitting, let's say, let's say, just as an example, it could be Shehnaz Bano underscore, uh, uh, let's say the assignment one is on, on, on an MRI machine, Shehnaz Bano underscore MRI uh, assignment one, you know, that is just one example of giving it an effective name. And as a teacher, when I've received it, it is much easier for me, you know, to organize them and able to, you know, tell uh, that which, which file is, let's say, uh, let's say uh, you know, important and needs to be stored and which ones are superfluous and needs to be discarded. 
So, uh, you know, these are just again, digital hoarding comes under the bigger umbrella of digital ethics. And these are just some examples where having good digital ethics, having good practices can take us and our organization a long way.